government to form emergency management technical committee. COVID-19 daily cases breach 4,000 mark. Good evening, I'm Amin Carlos and welcome to News at 10. Well, former Lord President Tun Dr. Muhammad Saleh Abbas was buried at the Sheikh Ibrahim Muslim Cemetery in Jalan Pusara, Kuala Chunganu at 10.40 a.m. Tun Dr. Muhammad Saleh, 91, who died of pneumonia at 3.20 a.m. today, was taken to the cemetery at about 10.15 a.m. The burial process was handled by some 10 personnel from the Trungano Health Department equipped with personal protective equipment and PPE. However, the deceased family members and journalists were not allowed to be at the burial ground. His son-in-law, Juan Pauzi Yahya, said Tun Dr. Muhammad Saleh, who was chairman of As-Salihin Trusty Burhan, was admitted to Hospital Sultana Nur Zahira, Trungano, on Thursday after testing positive for COVID-19. The family were told that the former Lord President had breathing difficulties, declining blood pressure and other problems adding to the factor that he was born with only one kidney. Tun Dr. Mohamed Saleh was buried next to his first wife, Topwan Azima Mohamed Ali, who died in 2016. He leaves behind his wife, Topwan Junaida Wanjuso, five children and 26 grandchildren. In 1984, Tun Dr. Mohamed Saleh was appointed the Lord President, now known as Chief Justice, a post he held until his expulsion during the constitutional crisis in 1988. He was also one of the drafters of the Rukun Nagara in 1970. In the 10th general election in 1999, he won the Jerte state seat in Trungano on a pass ticket, but did not contest in the next polls in 2004 on health grounds. The young Nibitwan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riai Turin Al Mustafa Bilasha and Raja Burmaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria conveyed their condolences to the family of Tun Dr. Mohamed Saleh Abbas. In a statement posted on the Instana Nagara's Facebook page, the Majesty said they were saddened by his passing and hoped that his family would be patient and remain strong in facing this situation. While well, the King and Queen expressed their appreciation for the service and deeds by the late Tun Dr. Mohamed Saleh to society and the country and regards with his death as a big loss to the nation. Prime Minister Tantri Muhyiddin Yassin also conveyed his condolences to the family of Tun Dr. Mohamed Saleh through a Facebook post on his official page. The Prime Minister on behalf of the Malaysian government expressed his gratitude for the contribution by Tun Dr. Muhammad Saleh in upholding the justice and integrity of judicial institution during his tenure as Lord President. The government today agreed to form an emergency management technical committee to ensure the smooth management of the emergency nationwide. The committee will be jointly chaired by the Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Parliament and Law, Dato Takiyuddin Hassan, and Chief Secretary of the Government, Tansri Mohamed Zuki Ali. The formation of the committee was decided at the National Security Council of the MKN emergency session, which chaired by Prime Minister Tansri Muhyiddin Yassin today via video conferencing with all Menteri Basar and Chief Ministers. In a statement, the Prime Minister said the committee will be responsible for scrutinizing and examining any emerging issues related to emergency and recommending solutions. It will also be responsible for monitoring issues related to the implementation and management of emergency at federal and state levels. The eight-member committee includes the Director General of Public Service Department, Secretary General of the Treasury, Attorney General, Chief of Defense Forces, Inspector General of Police, Health Director General and MKN Director General. Malaysia's COVID-19 situation deteriorated drastically today with the Health Ministry reporting a record high of 4,029 new cases detected in the past day. Now, the number handily surpasses the previous record of 3,377 that was reached just earlier this week. 
In a statement, the health ministry said Salango recorded the highest number of cases with 1,466, followed by Johor, 719, Sabah, 449, Kuala Lumpur, 347, and Negri Sambilan, 214. It added that there are currently 37,126 active cases in the country. The ministry also said that 2,148 more patients have recovered and discharged from hospitals nationwide, taking the number of recoveries to 117,375. There are 205 patients currently being treated at ICU with 79 who require breathing assistance. The health ministry also informed that eight patients had died from the infection as of noon today bringing the nation's death toll to 594. In addition, the ministry reported six new clusters today affecting Johor, Negri Sambilan, Perak and Pahang. The government has decided to establish an integrated hospital at the Malaysia Agro Exposition Park, Serdang, Mipes, in order to treat patients in categories 3, 4 and 5 to be stabilized before they are sent for intensive treatment to the hospital. Health Minister Dato Sri Dr. Atam Baba said the strategy was aimed at treating patients from the COVID-19 quarantine and low-risk treatment center or PKRC, Mipes 2.0 categories 1 and 2, which suddenly fell into categories 3 four and five. The integrated hospital will start operations on 24th of January. Ketiga ialah berkaitan dengan uh, bilangan uh, petugas yang akan ditempatkan di sini, uh, akan dipertingkatkan dari semua agensi, terutama KKM yang akan menempatkan uh, seorang infectious disease physician eh. Uh, pada 24 hari bulan satu ini dan juga uh, pakar dalam bidang uh, anestetis iaitu yang boleh mengendalikan mesin-mesin uh, pernapasan dan juga rawatan rapi ya eh. He was meant after visiting the PKRC MIPS 2.0 in Serdang. Meanwhile, the PKRC 2.0 will be improved and is expected to accommodate up to 10,000 patients category 1 and 2. The minister said the improvement of the PKRC 2.0 was the opening of a new hall scheduled for Monday. In another development, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam said 500,000 frontliners are set to receive the COVID-19 vaccine in the first quarter of this year. Malaysia is expected to receive the first batch of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine by the end of February, and the minister assured the vaccines will arrive as scheduled. Commenting on the logistics issued faced by Pfizer, which said there would be a shortage of supplies, Dato Dr. Adam said Malaysia had signed a detailed agreement over the matter. Vaksin Pfizer BioNTech ni kita dah buat uh, uh, MSA, Malaysian Manufacturing and Supply Agreement, eh? bermakna mereka akan mematuhi eh, bekalan ke negara kita mengikut jadual yang kita telah putuskan bersetuju sama. Untuk negeri-negeri lain tu kita tak ambil uh, maklum uh, bahawa mereka ada kelemahan. Tapi di peringkat negara kita, uh, apa yang kita telah uh, meterai, eh, uh, itu yang akan uh, kita laksana. The government has reviewed the current situation and agreed to allow optical shops and self-service laundromats to operate in areas subjected to the movement control order, the MCO. Well, Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Dato Sri Alexander Nansalingi said the decision was made after taking into account the requirement of the people who need the services. In a release statement, the minister said the permission is subject to conditions that will be specified in the MCO's standard operating procedure, the SOPs, that will be issued in the near future. He also reminded industry players in the trade and distribution sector to comply with the stipulated SOP at their respective premises during the MCO period. While failure to do so will result in actions being taken, including issuing warnings, compounds, and closure of business premises. He added that the action and cooperation of all relevant parties will be able to balance the needs between the country's economic survival as well as curbing the COVID-19 infection.
one-time permit for self-employed, go out for work. In areas where COVID-19 is widespread and physical distance cannot be maintained, masks can help stop the spread of COVID-19. Here's what to know about children and masks. Those under the age of five don't need to wear a mask because they are less likely to be able to wear it properly. However, there may be local requirements or times when a mask is necessary, such as when the child is sick. Children six to 11 years old can wear a mask when recommended. Make sure they can wear it safely and there is adequate adult supervision. The use of masks for children 12 and over should follow the same guidance as adults when they cannot guarantee at least a one metre distance from others. Well, police detained 472 people for defying MCO SOPs yesterday. Senior Minister for Security, Dato Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob, said of the number, 15 were remanded and the other 457 were compounded. Well, among the violations were not wearing masks, 182 cases, failing to prepare tools to record customers' entry to premises, 85, premises opening after hours or without permits, 66, not maintaining physical distancing, 65, and interstate or inter-district travel without permission, 32. Authorities also stopped 65 foreigners from enroaching into the country under or benting as efforts to secure entry points under the movement control order. Dato Sri Ismail Sabri said authorities also conducted checks at 22 construction sites nationwide yesterday and found 17 complying with the SOP. Four others were not in compliance and was ordered to close. Well, those who are self-employed in Kelantan and need to go out to look for daily jobs can now apply for a one-time travel permit at the nearest police station. Well, Kelantan Police Chief Dato Safian Mahmud said the one-time permit issue would be issued for the duration of the enforcement of the Movement Control Order, the MCO, in the state from today until 26th of January. Mana bukan dia datang tiap-tiap hari. Ha, dia datang sekali, kita bagi satu kebenaran sehingga berakhir PKP. Ini antara pembaharuan yang kita buat. Ha, kita nak memudahkan ha, masyarakat kita bergerak. Kalau masa sama, ekonomi juga boleh dijana. Jadi tak perlu dua, tiga kali datang balai. For emergency cases, Dato Safian said the permit to travel can be applied at the police roadblock and route to their respective destinations. However, he said they have to submit proof for the travel. Well, the organizer of the free frozen chicken drive through event in Putrajaya has been issued with a compound for holding the program without the approval of the authorities. Putrajaya Police Chief ACP Mohamed Fadzli of brother Fadzil Ali said the compound was issued under Section 22, Subsection B of the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988. Well, in a statement, ACP Mohamed Fadzil explained that the police received preliminary information about the program held yesterday and had issued a letter informing the organizer that approval has not been given by the Putrajaya District Police Headquarters, IPD, as the district has been imposed with the COVID-19 Movement Control Order and CEO. Well, he said the program which distributed free frozen chicken on first come first serve basis had resulted in a traffic congestion as well as people who had flocked to the location. Well, checks by police found that the organizers and public members did not adhere to the standard operating procedures, the SOPs, including failure to observe physical distancing. The district police chief said the authorities would not compromise with anyone in enforcing the law during the MCO period. Six Bangladeshi security guards were arrested for allegedly involved in the beating of a local man at a shopping complex in Alostakada. Well, the suspects, all aged between 26 and 41, were detained following a police report lodged by the 34-year-old victim. While Kota Star Police Chief ACP Ahmad Shukri Mat Akhir said the incident happened at about 3 p.m. yesterday when the victim parked his motorcycle in front of the shopping complex. His actions caused one of the security guards to approach and reprimand him for not parking at the allocated space.
An argument then occurred between the two individuals before the other guards intervened. ACP Ahmad Shukri said the victim claimed that he was hit by the suspects using a wooden stick after being dragged into a nearby room. The case is being investigated under Section 147 of the Penal Code. The My30 Plus 30 buy one free one package for the purchase of the unlimited travel pass My30 has received encouraging response as 1,283 users have redeemed the passes on the first day, which was yesterday. Prasarana Malaysia Burhan Prasarana said the special package is among the initiatives implemented by Tourism, Arts and Culture Ministry as a recovery plan for domestic tourism spearheaded by the Tourism Malaysia Promotion Board, Tourism Malaysia. Well, in a statement, Prasarana explained that consumers could redeem the travel pass package at the LRT KL Central Station and the Pasar Sunny Rapid KL Bus Hub. The special offer took off on 21st December last year with the redemption period starting yesterday until 31st March 2021. Members of the public can obtain more information regarding the campaign by surfing the Rapid KL official website. Well, that's all the time we have this evening. Our top story, Government to Form Emergency Management Technical Committee. Well, folks, join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. I'm in Carlos. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.